Hello YouTube, Zmanzilla here, and I was asked a question on my YouTube channel uh, regarding how to do difficulty levels for boards. They asked me, they said, how do you, how did you do the difficulty for Devil City Ransom? How do you make, I couldn't find how to, how the difficulty was implemented. Now, the, the difficulty thing for Devil City Ransom is a little different. That's actually a risk reward system. The, uh, the difficulty, quote unquote, is based on whether you are choosing to have infinite lives, a limited number of lives, or permadeath. And you, by choosing Using which of those life systems you're going to get, you get a certain point bonus. It doesn't actually change the difficulty of the board itself, as it turns out. So, um, so the the difficulties on Devil City Ransom is kind of a misnomer. But that said, there is a there is a way to do difficulty levels. I've been doing some experimentation here, and uh, came up with an, uh, a system here that's uh, pretty streamlined and it allows that you can implement it on just about any board, even ones you've already made. You know, depending on how you spawn your enemies, of course, and and it works or works pretty good. I'll show you how it works here. But uh, basically what I've done is I've set up a little test area here. I've set up, uh, you know, just the basics here to give myself some stuff. I set up a, a kill switch for myself. So I, one of the ways we're going to measure the, the difficulty that I'm implementing here is the amount of damage I take from certain attacks. So I want to be able to die you know, instantly to kind of both clear the board of any enemies I've put out and to reset my own health back to 100 with zero armor. And we've set up a series of machines. This one is going to allow us to make adjustments to a damage factor. And this one's going to allow us to make adjustments to a health factor. So we're going to be able to, on the fly, change the health and difficulty of, or health and damage, I should say, of the three monsters that we've got coming up here, these three mobs. And then this is, uh, this is basically the whole code right here. Uh, the idea is you, you create a couple of variables. One's called health factor, the other called damage factor, and those have to be numbers. So those have to, those are actually numbers, which are basically integers with dots on them. And, you know, uh, and then you, you take an AI proxy, and then uh, we're going to, every time an AI spawned, and we got to do this on a 0.2 second delay, as I discovered during an experiment, and we'll cover that in a minute, but you have an on AI spawned at a 0.2 second delay, and you have it apply a buff of health based on the health factor, and a buff of damage based on the damage factor, okay? All right. So, Sadite, Sadite. Let's go ahead and uh, start up the player here, and I can show you how this works. Basically, I've I, I've set up a series of machines that will set the damage and health factors anywhere between 1.0 and 5.0, and what those actually reflect are multiplication factors. You know, that's that's sort of how this is going to work. By every, you know, the, the the health and damage, however you choose to buff that, will be multiplied by a factor of whatever that is so uh, give you an example here so here we have our damage factor everything's set to 1.0 health factor is currently set to 1.0 for best results here we're gonna go ahead and uh, we'll grab a worker okay hi worker why don't you give us a nice little slap there worker okay he pops us notice that he did 15 points of damage with a slap okay now I'm gonna die don't worry, I'm coming right back. But, um, so he did 15 points with his little slap. So now damage, if we bring it up to a factor of 2.0, expected behavior is that his slap will now do 30 points of damage. Come on. And there you have it, 30 points of damage. All right, we'll die to reset. Which means... Okay, so now we I have machines that will set the damage all the way up to 5. We'll go ahead and skip 3 and 4 for now, but well, you know, when we set our damage to 5, damage factor 5, he should be doing 5 times his normal amount of damage. So a 15-point slap should now be doing 75 points of damage, if we've done our math. Or he could just cold cock me. <laughs> so uh, that might not be the same attack he hit me with. But you, you get the idea. Like a damage factor of five is some dangerous stuff here. So, all right, come on, give me the slap. Yeah, he's just going to kick the crap out of me. So, um, yeah, but <laughs> um, let's go ahead and set the damage back to one here real quick. And I'll show you with something that's a little easier for me to keep track of, which is the Imp's Fireball. Again... 15 points of damage, pretty easy to kill. Uh, we'll set the imp to 5, and his damage should be significantly higher. Uh, no, I didn't ask to be slapped. I... Imps never behave themselves. That's why I tried to use the worker for this test. But <laughs> All right, imp 
Damage factor 5. Hit me with that fireball. Actual fireball. Come on, man. Come on, people are watching. Don't You're embarrassing me. Not the big one, the little one. There you go. There you go. See? 75 points. So, uh, so one of the problems is that the, um, the workers actually have two melee attacks. <laughs> I, I, I can't, I can't choose which one they choose to hit me with. So, um, but anyway, so as you can see, the imp's fireball, the normal one, does 15 points of damage on a factor of one, and a factor of five multiplies it by five, and it does 75 points of damage. So, same sort of deal with the health. So, everybody's health is at 1.0. Now, workers are famously easy to go down, right? So, what if we set that damage factor to three? He's going to have three times the normal health that a worker has. As you can see, that makes him three times harder to kill. Um, factor of five, again, you know, when you're dealing with the shotgun, you're not, dealing, you're not really dealing usually with precise amounts of damage, so, but... Roughly, that should take four to five hits to kill him. There you go. So, um, as you can see, uh, you know, and then, of course, it, we can fluctuate at any time we see fit. Now, these buffs are only going to apply to uh, monsters at the point when they are spawned, you know, but if, as long as you're using spawners, then that's not a problem. You basically have a simple, easy-peasy solution uh, that that works throughout the entire board. So now let's go over in detail how this works uh, so that it, it, you can see how to build it on your own. Okay. And more importantly, how to implement it in a way that doesn't involve tripod switches or, or possibly it does. So what you got and uh, is you, what you basically got to do, uh, and again, going back to this very simple little string of code, you, you create a couple of uh, numbers. One of them's going to, I call the first one health factor and the other one's called damage factor. Okay. Now the damage, the health and damage factor reflect a multiplication factor. So whatever a, a, a monster's normal, whatever a mob's normal health is, this number will multiply it by that. So let's say, for example, that you want to have like easy, medium, and hard. And your easy monsters, you want them to, you, you want you want your easy monsters to be roughly 50% what they normally are during the campaign or you know or during uh, normal snap maps. So what you would have you would do is you'd have a button that you know when you push it for easy uh, unused it will set the health and and ideally damage of of the mob to like 0.5. You know that's that's 50% of what a a, a, a you know, a mob would normally be. So that would be your easy. And then your medium, you have it set to 1.0, which is to, you know, you basically keep it, you, know, you keep it normal. Um, uh, you could have a hard where you, the, the damage is set, you know, everything is set, to, uh, you know, a hard where everything is set to like 2x, you know, so 2.0 or 2.5 or something like that. And if you really wanted to just go insane with it, you could have like an insane mode uh, button that sets it to like a factor of 10 or 20. 20 or however high you wanted to make it um you know th th really you want to you personally want to sh show a little restraint maybe with the with the upper end based on you know how you want the board pace and how, you know how much of a slog you want it to be but generally speaking if you want to basically if you want there to be a difficulty system on your board you just you, you make it make it so that your difficulty buttons set you know, you, you set the number of each one to uh, whatever you want it to be. And, you know, just figure out using multiplication how hard you want things to be. Do you want the, you know, a normal mode would normally be a 1.0 for normal mode. Um, an easy mode would then be like a 0 0.5 or, a, you know, or a 0 0.6 perhaps. Um, you know, a hard, hard would be like in the vicinity of like, you know, 2.0 and then your, you know, nightmare mode would be like three anywhere between three and 5.0 i mean keep in mind that a five you know five a 5.0 damage on a on an imp makes their fireball do three quarters of a normal damage bar in health so these are things you want to think about and experiment with kind of like this but that's basically how you how you add difficulty to a little string here you know you you just you, you make a couple of these you know and then you makes a, an AI proxy that, again, the very important on AI spawned must be on an output delay. Uh, the reason we I discovered that this is the case is because there is actually kind of a delay 
um, between when you know when the demon is spawned and when these sort of things uh, when when it's ready to take a buff. And so what was actually happening was that uh, demons were spawning up. And then it it was actually like it was it wasn't actually applying the buff right away. Like it was it was it, it was doing it in sort of a weird order. So by setting the output delay on the on AI spawn to zero point two, you're forcing the order of operations to wait until after the demon is spawned before it applies the buff. And point two seconds is a is is a good amount of time you know, to do that. So, you know, it's like it was one fifth of a second. And so, you know, the demon spawns one fifth of a second later, the buffs are applied and, and it's all ready to go. And by, by doing that output delay, like I said, you're forcing the order of operations in such a way that it guarantees that every demon spawned gets those buffs. Whereas if you don't apply that uh, output delay, no guarantees on whether or not that spawn is actually going to have the buffs on it or not, because it does get a little confused from time to time. So, um, again, very, very important part of this whole process, but it is a very, very simple process. You know, six, six objects basically is what all it takes. And then, you know, you just set your signage up to, or you set your switches up to just, you know, do easy, medium, hard, insane. However, you could have a bazillion different difficulty levels with this you can even have variations on it where you can have like you know uh you know like super hot mode where your damage is like a factor of like 50 and the health is all like a factor of z you know z 0 0.01 you know so basically like everything dies in one hit in this mode uh or you, you know you have another one where the damage is low but the health is high and it's bullet sponge mode or something you know you can have a lot of fun with like how to figure out how to like you you know do varying degrees of damage and health based on you know how you want the board to play and uh, you know you're allowing your players to choose different experiences based on this so um that's that's basically it if you have any questions about this feel free to ask them in the comments and as always be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already thanks for watching